My best friend has an expression. She says, life just happens. 18 years ago, the 30th of April, 1998, at exactly 12.30, my wife and I, we have an appointment at Hodinga Hospital, south of Stockholm. Our son has gone through a number of tests, and we were about to get the results. As many of you already know, children when they are six months, 18 months, and three years old. Their mental and physical developments are tested. We stepped into the doctor's office. It's a white, cold, very sterile and very unwelcoming office, like any other hospital room. The doctor, the doctor started explaining to us that our son's perception of the world was totally different than others. It was as if he was living in his own world. My wife was then more knowledgeable, so she asked that I a question. Is, she, is he autistic, she said. The doctor gently avoided the answer to the question directly, and she continued to explain. After a few minutes and an awkward silence, she finally says, yes, your son is autistic. Our son was autistic. That was his diagnosis. We got back home. I was driving, but I have no memory whatsoever how we got home. It was blank in my head. I come from a male-dominated culture. I'm an engineer, done my military service as an, as an officer in the Turkish army. I am 190 tall, made of Turkish steel, Tough guy with big muscles. In my culture, there are certain and simple set of rules. Things are either black or white, right or wrong, good or bad. But for this specific answer and the diagnosis, there were no answers. I was out of answers. And when it happens, I have a tendency to get nerdy. And I don't mean a you know, cute nerdy, I mean in a weird way, and only detailed. And I start reading about things. In 1998, it's pre-internet ages. There was no Google. I couldn't just Google it. So I went to the library. I went to the library and borrowed a bunch of books, 20, maybe 25 books, and I started reading into the topic. I wanted to know anything and everything about autism. I wanted to know what the cause was. I wanted to know, can this be helped? What can we do? What can I do? In one of the books I read, it said something like, children with autism have a behavior that they repeat. And then when they repeat that behavior, they feel comfort and secure. Children with autism have a behavior that they repeat. And when they repeat that behavior, they feel comfort and secure. So we decided, me and my wife, to start observing our son. And very soon we found out that behavior our son enjoyed sitting on the kitchen floor and spinning a coin. So I joined him. He's on my side. I just sat beside him. There is no contact. He spins his coin, and I spin my coin. Every day, for at least two hours after dinner, A week had passed, two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months. The shimmering lights of the sunset was turning our kitchen into a disco ball. Three months and four months. And after a while, I was so much into it, so if you just listen to the wobble noise now, pay really attention now, you will 
hear magic happening. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Four months and five months. Let me share a secret with you. I still spin a coin when I'm by myself, maybe in a coffee house, in a restaurant, maybe, maybe at work. And people around me may think that I'm weird and strange, and they're welcome to do so. That's when I find comfort, feel secure, and close to my son. After five months and two weeks, as I was spinning one coin, I realized that my son stops spinning his and moves around. He sits right across me. But I'm so much into my own coin spinning, I continue. <laughs> After 15 minutes or so, I see his hand reaching out. He grabs my arm, he pulls me toward him, and for the first time, for the first time ever, we have eye contact, real eye contact. For the first time ever, I get to see into his, his beautiful eyes, into his beautiful world. What a beautiful world that was, and what a beautiful world that is. I understood then that if you want to create a real human connection, a real human relation, you want to do things on his terms. Appreciate what he appreciates, understand what he understands. Then you can feel the joy, the pain, what they feel. Only then you can create the strongest relationships ever. Whether if it's with your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your friend, your colleague or your customer. Only then you can create the strongest relationships ever. And it only costs one Swedish kroner, or whatever currency you may have. You spin that coin for five months and two weeks. Life just happened. There is massive research about health, mental health conditions in the world. And the latest research indi indicates that children born with autism increase rapidly and continue to do so. Is that good or is that bad? The fact that numbers are, um, numbers are increasing so rapidly, is that a threat or an opportunity? As an entrepreneur, I know that diversity when well managed with inclusive leadership means competitive edge and profitability. So what if you and I, here and now, we decide on a paradigm shift? You and I, we decide that there are no disabilities, there are only special abilities, and there are no diagnoses, there are only superpowers. I have an unusual guru with a superpower. He has multiple superpowers, and one of his superpowers has changed my, my professional life tremendously especially when it comes to how I handle my meetings. And I do attend many, many meetings in my days. Before I was the person who went to any meeting, attend any meeting and dominated the meeting to get the results I needed. But these days, I am more, I have another approach. I take my time to tune in and try to identify all the different stakeholders. What are their needs? What do they want? And I try and try to provide an environment where everybody, the others, can perform to the best of their abilities. And you know what? Things seem to get quicker, many times better, and I don't have to do all the work. Good deal. I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes. Think about people with differences. I want you to think about one special person in your life. Get really in touch with your feelings. How do you feel? People with diversity are all around us. 
You may open your eyes now. Open your eyes. Open your hearts and open your mind to see the differences. Look around. People with special abilities and superpowers are closer to you than you think. Maybe sitting right next to you. So I'm going to ask you to go out there and find your unusual guru. Someone who's different. Someone who sees the world differently. I promise you, your, your life will take a turn for the better. I promise you, your life will never be the same. Yes, of course, I wanted to enter into my son's world. Never would I think that a coin would be the key into such a beautiful world full of beauty and wisdom. My guru's wisdom and guidance has formed me and transmitted to the person in front of you, doing one of the most frightening things I can think of. I am who I am thanks to my guru. I do what I do thanks to my guru, my son, Hokan. <laughs>